Let's pick up where we left off in episode one. Now that we can create posts on our blog, let's take the next step and add comments. We'll use another Phoenix task, this time to generate the model. We'll use a singular module name, comment, and the plural version comments for the database table, then a list of attributes for our comments. In this case, we'll want them to have a body that's a text. And since comments will belong to a post, we'll create a post ID and reference posts. This will help set up our association. Now before we migrate our database, let's look at the comment model it generated. Since we reference posts, the belongs to post association was set up for us. Now let's set up the other half of this relationship. We'll open our post module and add the has many comments association to the schema. Since comments and posts have an association, what would be the best way to delete all comments associated with a post if that post is deleted? To do this, let's go to the database migration that was just created for comments. When we add the post ID column, we're given the on delete option. By default, it's set to nothing. If we change it to delete all, this will trigger all of a post comments to be deleted along with it. With that changed, we can run our database migration. Now we need to add a form to our blog so people can add comments. Let's start by adding a new controller named comment controller. And in it, we'll define a create function. It will take the connection and pattern match to get the comment params and the post ID. I've completed this function off screen, but let's walk through what it's doing. Inside, we'll look up the post with the post ID, then we'll build a comment change set. Like the function's name implies, it builds an association between comment and post, and sets the value of the body key from our comment params as our comments body attribute. Finally, we'll insert it into the database and then redirect to our post. With our controller good to go, let's build the view for our comments. And then we'll add the comment view module. Now we can add our template. First, we need to create a comment directory and then a file in that directory named new.html.eex. Then we can add our form. We'll use the Phoenix Form 4 helper, passing in our comment change set and our action, which we'll define in our routes later. Now that we have our form, let's display it beneath our posts. Let's open our posts show template. We'll render our new template here using the render function. It takes the module, in this case, comment view, the template, and a set of assigns, which will be our connection, post, and comment change set. All three are used in our template. Now we need to add the route that our comment form will post to. So let's open up our router and we'll add our comments resource just below our posts. Since comments have an association with posts, let's nest comments in posts. This will include a post ID in the params, making it easier for us to associate the comment with its post. And for the purposes of this demo, we don't need all of the routes that the resources macro builds. So let's limit this to only have a route to create comments. Now let's go to a post in our browser and we'll see an error. This is because we are calling the comment change set in our comment form, but haven't defined it. Let's fix that. We'll go to our post controller and update the show function, creating the comment change set that our form needs. Then we'll pass in the comment change set so it can be accessed by our template. There's one quick improvement we can make to this. Having to write teacher.comment every time we want to use comment is a little long. But Elixir provides a simple way for us to shorten it so we can just write comment. 
going to the top of our controller, let's update our alias to include comment in addition to post. Now we can go back and remove teacher from teacher.comment. Now if we go back to our post, we see our form. Let's test it out and add some comments. And if we check our database directly, we can see that our comments were saved. Now we just need to display them below our post. Going back to our show action on our post controller, we'll need to explicitly tell Ecto that we want to load all the comments for our post. This will work, but let's update it to take advantage of one of Elixir's great features, the pipe operator. The pipe operator will take whatever is returned and pass it in as the first argument of the subsequent function call on its right side. So rewriting this, the post model gets passed in initially as the first argument in repo get, which then returns a post struct. The post struct is then passed in as the first argument of repo preload. Now that we're loading our comments, let's update our post show template. Now here we're just looping through each of our post comments and displaying its body. And if we come back to our post, we can see its comments. Now let's add another comment just to ensure everything's working. And great, you can see the comment we added is displayed below. Stay tuned for our next episode and happy coding.